Recording is on. All right, so I think you had mentioned that you had worked on some stuff. Uh, you were doing some stuff with stores, I believe, um, and some of the login workflow. Um, yeah. I was uh, changing to use the Svelte stores for the authentication process and, and the user object as well. So it okay. can be automatically reactively updated to the application interface. Awesome. Cool. So do you want to share your screen and walk me yeah. through some of that stuff? Cool. Oh, again, the same problem. <laughs> Firefox uh, doesn't allow one screen at a time. Uh -huh. um, can you see it now? Um, yeah, yep, I can. Yeah, I see your IDE right now. Yeah. Great. So I've added some, some commits here. So I have reinitialized the plenty site for this test repository. Okay. Sure. It's extended some files out, router, session storage, and admin menu. Awesome. And added GitLab out application information to plenty JSON. Okay. So that was just set up. And then I've um, done login and logout without reload. Okay. Here. So uh, actually, uh, quite a lot <laughs> reworked. Oh, yeah. Whoa, cool. There's also some formatting stuff there, but. Sh sure, <laughs> yep. Awesome. So there's now stores for internal stores for the tokens, mm -hmm. code ver verifier and state. OK. They are using uh, Svelte stores. OK. It's a great session store. I'm actually, yeah. In, in so, store, just creates a Svelte store that's synchronized with um, with uh, local storage. Okay. And so the idea here is instead of having to like force a redirect after logging in, it will just like have the information because the store will update. Is that the yeah. thought process? Okay. Yeah. Um, so in the router, you can see that uh, the out in the out the JS file expose user object mm -hmm. as a store. Okay. And it can be used with the dollar sign in the Svelte, Svelte files. Okay. And here is just, if it's in progress of authentication, it will finish the authentication. So it will request the authentication tokens and so on. Awesome. Or refresh the authentication. Oh, cool. And is the ref because I don't, I don't think I ever had the refresh stuff working. So is that? Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, I haven't tested it actually because I I don't know how how to invalidate the token. Yeah, <laughs> from, exactly. From the GitLab. That was yeah. That I wasn't sure how to do that either. Um, to I guess you just have to like wait it out. Um, yeah. So and can you kind of explain to me and anybody who's watching um, the process for um, a refresh? So basically. Um, GitLab wants to recycle tokens every once in a while for security reasons, right? They don't want an old stale token hanging out in case somebody else is able to get that from you somehow, right? Is that the thinking behind that? Um, yeah, probably, yeah. Because uh, if someone is able to get that, that token, they can do whatever with it. And if, yeah. if it doesn't like invalidate at some point, then they can do it however long they want to yep. do the evil stuff. Yeah, but, that makes sense. But uh, getting it, refreshing the token forces it to be the uh, forces it to call back to the site that mm -hmm. requested the token. So it's yeah only for that site then. And then is it doing the the code proof again or something? Like I'm I'm curious how it's actually like how is it how are you proving that you're you're the the person who should be getting the refresh? I guess. Well, must be by the callback URL. Uh -huh. And the code verifier is just that um, we, are, we have the right for that token, basically. Uh -huh. I, I think so. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm always so, like, and then I, I guess my question, and again, this is not free to answer. It's me to just understand like how Pixie works in general. I mean, what happens if somebody got your, because I mean, you're storing your your code verifier string mm -hmm. to like your local storage. Presumably somebody could get that information and then could they yeah. spoof the whole like refresh token process? Um. Yeah, it will be redirected to the redirect URL. Ah, uh, yeah the cases and it's checked from the list of redirected URLs mm -hmm. that's allowed but yeah. um, I guess the user of the computer can do it whatever they want with the token sure because yeah. they have complete access to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so, okay. So they can modify the website and from the front end side yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. The user yeah. has the power power to con uh, like call the APIs, but it doesn't. The thing is that it doesn't. Um, we don't want it to go to us a different computer. Yeah. Or, yeah. That makes sense. Cellular. Yeah, and on your computer, you would obviously you have your your login information or whatever yeah. cached in your in your browser. Yeah, so that's true. how it's continuing to use that. Um, versus if someone else was able to get the token, they wouldn't have that information to actually refresh it. Presumably, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but actually, in the admin menu, we can see the or actually in HTML file was it. Here we can see how it's, the user object is used. Mm -hmm. You just verify that the user object is there and then get the is authenticated parameter from it or uh -huh. property from it. And it's automatically updated to the user interface, this Great. bit here. Yep. And it's cool. passed cool. also to the uh, page component. Was it pages component? Mm -hmm. Layout, layout. Okay, so it's probably pages. Yep. And then uh, there's the login button button that is also in the user. In the user object. Oh, perfect. Object. Yeah, that makes yep. it a little more con uh, concise that way than passing two separate objects. That's great. Yeah. Um, and admin, there's lookout function call. Oh, it's awesome. Perfect. It's great. Really that simple. API for looking in and logging out. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like it. I, I like it nice and simple like that. Um, I think, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I, I'm trying to find that balance um, between like, you know, making things flexible so people can kind of customize the mm -hmm. thing, but also making it so they don't have to rig up and feel like they're writing a bunch of stuff from scratch, right? So like, I think yeah. this, this idea of the, the user object um, being something easy that can be checked and, you know, uh, log in, log out is, is nice. Uh, I think it's a nice compromise. Um, I think yeah. you took it the, the step farther before it was the user object and the, the login object separate. You know, I think it's great mm -hmm. that you've kind of combined this into one thing that makes a little more sense. And actually, we can see from the authentication file that what's the exposed from the user object. So there's, I'll just open the file. Um, there's the is being authenticated, mm -hmm. Boolean is authenticated, finish authentication, Function login and logout. It's awesome. There's actually nothing more here yet, but there could be. Sure. It's not exposing the tokens or anything like that. Yep. Yet, at, at least. Great. That's awesome. And then, so on the front end, when you're actually like doing this, I assume it looks pretty similar to how it looked before, but it's just a, a little more seamless without the the hard redirects. Is that? Yeah. Does it look any different? We can actually look look at the example. Okay. And so Jesse, did you start this from uh, like a scratch site as well? Is that kind of how you, you started this, um, these updates? I haven't, I haven't looked, is it in the, yeah, the repo I, that we're working on? I re reinitialized the plenty site, just uh, deleted all the files and created okay. Perfect. new files with, um, with plenty of utility. Awesome, perfect. So it's the same repo, but a, a basically yeah. a fresh branch, right? Like a fresh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And this 
you can grab them the code from here and then add to the plenty. Sweet. Yeah, that sounds great. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah this, right now, that's kind of what I'm doing because it's all like uh, embedded files in plenty. Um, I yeah. can just copy it over. Um, yeah, at some oh, point, sure. we should probably, I, yeah. I can show you how to do that too so you can get some commits in, in the project yeah, through. That'd sure. be cool. Yeah. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's it's basically just like the same file structure as you have here, but it's mm. it's in, in a slightly different structure. I could walk you through that at some point. Yeah. But let's try, try the login. Okay. I am probably not log, logged in yet. Yeah. Let's look into GitLab. All right. And it's there. Okay. Great. And oh, look at this. <laughs> nice. Okay. I don't know how it, it shouldn't be there because I'm not on a different branch, but yeah. Yeah. And then if you change page, it, obviously that that is <clears throat> probably getting that from the content object that changes as well, I imagine. Yeah. If you, uh, yeah. yeah okay. If I go to yeah. about it, Great. change to about. Good, good. And this is does it really coming along. And it actually. Uh, oh, changed look, at, look at that, Jesse. Wow. Good progress, okay. man. Hmm. Got the editable things. Yeah, this will, this will, yeah, eventually make this into uh, yeah, some kind of uh, uh, simple editing. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, currently, but I'll work on the committing stuff. Sure. Next. Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, this is awesome. You're, you're doing great progress. I think um, for now, like, yeah, the, just editing that as JSON is fine. I, I think. In terms of my priorities, getting like you, like we've talked about, you know, getting it to commit mm -hmm. back first, and then we'll then we'll work on the editing experience. But this is yeah. awesome. I think um, thinking th you're you're doing a great job thinking through like what this API is going to look like. I, I think you know combining everything to the user object makes sense. Mm -hmm. How you're kind of laying this out makes sense. Using stores so we don't have to do funky hard refreshes yeah. and stuff like that <laughs> all makes sense. Um, it, it's awesome. I think what you're doing is is great. Um, do you want to real quickly look at the if you if you go to um the repository for plenty, probably the easiest way to get there is to go to, yeah, just like go to plenty.co or you can go either way. Plenty.co, yeah. And then if you click the, the yeah, the GitHub there in the upper right. Um, so, okay, do you wanna just like kind of look at where this stuff goes right now? Um, so in, in the top uh, where it says CMD command, if you click into that yep. folder, um, then we have defaults folder and this is where everything in the embedded file system goes. So um, <laughs> there's a couple different ways we do it. So there's the ejected, which, okay, so there's common mm -hmm. things, right? The, the node modules are common between any of the different starters we have. Um, and then mm -hmm. the ejected is common as well. And then um, let's look at the starters folder first at the bottom. There's mm -hmm. there's basically two different starters. So there's the learner, which is when you start, when you do a plenty new site, you get the learner. Mm -hmm. And that basically has like, you know, the blog posts and all the, the default stuff. Mm -hmm. Basically, the idea here is... Like this. Exactly. That's the learner mm -hmm. starter. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea there is that <clears throat> I just wanted it to be something that's easy for folks to kind of like see some different features like, oh, this is how pagination works. This is how like a mm -hmm. content driven component works. Just, just like a basic learning um, process. So all those files in that starter are in there. The bear one is if you do a plenty new site and you name your site and then you do hyphen hyphen mm -hmm. bear, it basically yep. starts a very basic site. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it just says like my site, there's no pagination, yeah. there's, there's nothing, yeah. yeah. So, so that's the thought process behind there. So basically, um, all the login stuff, we're, we're just kind of like adding into the learner for the most part, that and mm -hmm. the ejected file system. So if you go back to the default folder up one, um, this is common between both of them. So in, in ejected, you'll see all the um, the files for uh, yeah. kind of like the uh, yeah, main, the router and the CMS stuff. So um, mm -hmm. if, if you want to start committing work into this, you could uh, start adding it, basically the stuff that you're doing there into this project here. And that way you, you get some commits on the repo and you become, you pop up as your head as one of the maintainers. Um, mm. uh, if that's not important, then I, I'm happy to copy it over. But uh, it seems like, you know, it'd be cool to have you on the repository since you're um, contributing to the project. Yeah. Again, I don't think this is priority getting it in now. I think keep keep cruising. You're doing great. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Working on the, you know, getting the commit to go back to GitLab is awesome. But at some point, this is just the process in case you're interested. Yeah, I think this is simple enough to edit and yeah. I can probably test it also. Yeah. And Do well, the... any, anything, uh, <laughs> documentation to commit, uh, compile it. Yeah. So I don't have any, so that's the thing. The, everything that I had documented so far for plenty has been 
of the mindset of someone using the product, I have done a very poor job of, of documenting how someone might contribute to the project, right? So um, it's pretty, so a little backstory, before when you wanted to embed other files into a Go binary, like a, a JavaScript file or a JSON file, you used to have to do like this really creative thing called Go generating. And um, it was kind of a bit of a process. Now it's a lot easier. So now we're using something called the embedded file system. So as soon right. as you add those files in there, it should start working with the process. So there's at least there's less steps than there used to be. Now mm -hmm. you still will have to compile it. So basically, um, <clears throat> if you are familiar with Go at all, uh, basically you, you can you compile your project to, to, to use it. Um, so there's a, a couple different ways you can do that. So if you download this repository and you add those files in, um, one way you can do it is you can do a go install command. And what they'll try to do is they'll try to build a binary and put it um, in like your path somewhere. So you can just run plenty from anywhere with this new compiled binary. Now, one thing you're going to run into issues with is if you've downloaded plenty with like a snap or some other method, those two things yeah. might conflict. So you have to make sure you're getting the binary from the right place. So you can avoid that by just running a go build command instead of an install command. And that yeah. will build the binary right in your working directory. And then mm -hmm. you can call it directly. So you do like dot forward slash plenty because that would be the name of the binary by default, yeah. I believe. So so you could do that and run that directly. Or you can do like a, a go run command and you can point it right to your main file. So there's a couple different ways you can do like simulate working with plenty from, from the basic thing. But um, yeah, I, I know it's kind of challenging because you have to compile it yourself right now. Um, but that I think the Go, Go utility will handle the dependencies and all the other things. So it should be cloning the repository and <laughs> running the command. Yeah, it's it's pretty good about that. So it uses yeah. Go modules and, it, and yeah, just the, the yeah. building should automatically get that stuff, I believe. Um, so so yeah, if you, if you want to experiment with it, yeah, get, get Go installed on yeah. your computer and uh, you know, uh, download the repo, add those files in, try to do a go build, and then try to run that that mm -hmm. binary that gets outputted, and you can get a sense of it. One thing you'll notice is um, the okay, so like normally in plenty, when you download it, you can do like plenty hyphen hyphen version, and you can see what version you're on. In mm -hmm. your local one that you're building, you won't be able to see version information because that basically gets added with git tags and it gets packaged up in CI, so you won't have that information. But um, <clears throat> you should still be able to kind of tell what's going on, hopefully. But, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, this is great, Jesse. Is there anything else you want to discuss on the video, or should I kill the feed? Yeah. Um, actually, I just showed you this login logout. Mm -hmm. It works with actually without any reloads. Oh, that's awesome. Just click and it's gone. Perfect. Looks it beautiful. Removes all, all the tokens and all the variables. Great. That's this is looking awesome. Looking. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is so great. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with, with the work. Um, I think, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I thought I had something that's on the tip of my tongue, but now it's gone. But yeah, no, this, this looks awesome. Um, yeah, I think uh, getting this stuff into the repo and, and also um, thinking about the, the commits back to GitLab is, is next, but this is great. Um, yeah. Great start. Cool. Yep. All right. I'll kill the video. <laughs>